Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Hit the subscribe button and hit like uh, if you like to. And Welcome to my channel and to all my subscribers I already have. Uh, thank you so much. You're such a blessing. And we're going to start out here with an um, article that I found. Um, Russian uh, descendant Valdemar Kara Mirza has been locked up and charged with treason after he returned to Moscow earlier this year to protest the invasion of Ukraine. In series of letters to BBC, reporter Sarah Rainsford, Kara Mirza said he doesn't regret his decision to return to Moscow to protest the war, explaining that the price of silence is unacceptable. In one of his letters, Kara Mirza said those who spoke out against the war knew the risk they faced, adding that he couldn't remain silent because silence is a form of complicity. The charges against Kara Mirza all stem from him uh, speaking out against the war in Ukraine and Valdemar Putin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I hardly ever get it right. <laughs> His lawyer believes Kara Mirza could spend as much as 24 years in prison. Kara Mirza's wife, uh, Evgenia, e -E -V -G -E -N -I -A, e -V Evgenia, who lives in the U.S. with their children, knew nothing of his arrest until his lawyer called her. Eventually, Kara Mirza was permitted to speak to his wife on the phone long enough to say, don't worry. She has not spoken to her husband since. Evgenia told Sarah Rainsford that her husband had to return to Russia to be with the people protesting against the invasion of Ukraine. She said he wanted to show them that they shouldn't be afraid in the face of that evil adding that while she respected and admired her husband for that, she also, she also could kill him for that. Ooh, I didn't see that part. Wow. I love and hate this man for his incredible integrity, if Evgenia told her. Kara Mirza was initially detained for disobeying a police officer, but once they had him in custody, the serious charges began piling up. He was accused of spreading false information about the Russian military and higher leadership. The charge of treason is based on three speeches Kara Mirza made abroad, including one in which he accused Moscow of prosecuting political opponents. In her BBC article, Rainsford shared some of the details from the letters Kara Mirza had sent her from his prison cell. I'll see if I can get to them. I'm not sure. Ukraine war. Russian activist writes letters from jail. When Valdemar Kara Mirza. Now that is kind of uh, Vladimir. When Vladimir Kara Mirza announced he was returning to Moscow earlier this year, his wife Evgenia knew the risk but did not try to stop him. Russia has invaded. Ukraine and made it crime to call it a war and made it a crime to call it a war. Thousands of protesters have been arrested. Valdemar himself was sworn opponent of President Vladimir Putin and an outspoken critic of atrocities committed by his military. Atrocity. I can pronounce that word. Atrocities. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Cities, <laughs> after cities, are committed by his military. See, if I work at it, I'll get it. <laughs> Still, the uh, opposition activists insisted on being in Russia. Now he has been locked up and charged with treason, and Evgenia has not been allowed to speak to him since April. Bless her heart. But in a series of letters to me from Detention Center Number Five, Vladimir who has twice been the victim of mysterious poisonings, says he has no regrets because the price of silence is unacceptable. Well, we know how that goes. The whole United States has been in silence and hasn't been griping too much about anything. 
Opposing President Putin was dangerously even before the invasion, but since then the oppression of dissent has intensified. Almost all prominent critics have either been arrested or left the country. Even so, the treatment of Vladimir is especially harsh. Vladimir is especially harsh. Well, I can imagine that one. Can't you? All the charges against him are for speaking out against the war and against President Putin, and yet his l lawyer calculates he could spend 24 years behind bars. We all understand the risk of opposition activity in Russia, but I couldn't stay silent in the face of what's happening because silence is a form of complicity. Vladimir explains in a letter from his cell. He felt he could not stay abroad either. I didn't think I had the right to continue my political activity to call other people to action if I was sitting safely somewhere else. He went to be with his people. And I could kill him. The first Ev Evgina heard of her husband's arrest was a call from his lawyer who had been tracking the act of his phone as he always did when his client and friend was in town. On the 11th of April, the phone had come to a stop at a Moscow police station. Vladimir was eventually allowed to call his wife, who lives in the U.S. with her children, for safety. There was just time to say, don't worry. Evgenia smiles at the absurdity of that instruction. A-B-S-U-R-D-I-T-Y. Absurdity. Absurdity. Whatever. Absurdity. In other words, smiles at what does that mean? You know, she... The couple were children of Perestrokia growing up during Russia's domestic awakening after the Soviet collapsed. Vladimir then studied history at Cambridge and simultaneously began a career in Russian politics as an advisor to the young reformer Boris Nemtsov. N E M N is in Nancy E M T S O V. Nemtsov. This is the longest the pair have been apart since their marriage on Valentine's Day in 2004. I bet it's so hard on her and those children. And the activist says not seeing his family is the hardest thing. I think about them every minute of every day. Cannot imagine what they're going through, he says. I love and hate this man for his incredible integrity, Evgenia told me on a recent trip to London. He had to be there with those people who went out on the streets and were arrested, she said, referring to the many Russians detained for opposing the war. He wanted to show that you shouldn't be afraid in the face of that evil, and I deeply respect and admire him for that, and I could kill him with love. Bless her heart. Evgenia has not been allowed to speak to her husband since he was jailed now. Vladimir is initially detained for disobeying a, disobeying a police officer, but once in custody, the serious charges began raining down. The activist was first accused of spreading false information about Russia's military and higher leadership. The rights group, OVD, Info, has recorded more than 100 prosecutions under that so-called fake news law since the war began. A local conciliar Alex Gorinov, Gorinov, G-O-R-I-N-O-V, Gorinov, was sentenced to seven years in July. An activist, Laya Yashin, will go on trial soon after referring to the murder of civilians in Buka. Vladimir's case is based on a speech in Arizona where he said Russia was committing war crimes in Ukraine with clustered bombs in residential areas and the bombing of maturity hospitals and maternity hospitals and schools. Oh my God. That has all been independently documented. But according to the charge sheet I have seen, Russia, Russian investigators deem his statements to be false because the defense ministry does not permit to use the use of banned means. Does not permit the use of banned means of conducting war. 
and insist that Ukraine's civilian population is not a target. The facts on the ground are ignored. The facts on the ground are ignored. Another charge stems from an event from political prisoners at which the activists referred to what investigators term Russia's supposedly repressive policies. Then last month he was charged with state treason. The activists responded to that in his latest letter. The Kremlin wants to portray Putin's opponents as traitors. The real traitors are those who are destroying the well-being, the reputation, and the future of our country for the sakes of their personal power, not those who are speaking out against it. Political Persecution The treason charge is based on three speeches abroad, including one in which Voldemar said that in Russia, political opponents were prosecuted. Persecuted. Investigators maintained that he was speaking on behalf of the U.S.-based Free Russia Foundation, which is banned in Russia, where any consultancy or assistance to a foreign orga organization considered a security threat can now be classified as treason. No secrets have to be divulged. State treason, treason for public speeches. That's just a Serb. It quite simply prosecutes for free speech. For opinion, not for any real crime, Valdemar's lawyer, uh, Vadim Prohokov, argues by phone from Moscow. Moscow. He says the activist has no link to the foundation at that time. This is a political case. They're trying to stigmatize the absolutely normal, civilized Russian opposition. And it shows his letters that he has wrote. Valdemar himself pointed out that the latest person accused of trans... Of, of treason for political opposition was a Nobel Prize winning writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn in 1974. All I can say is that I am honored to be in such company. Evgina finds it harder to, to sound so calm. I bet she does. My heart goes out to her and those children. This is not the first time she has been scared for her husband. He nearly died twice in Moscow, and the cause of his poisoning has never been identified. When he first collapsed in 2015 and slipped into a coma, Evgina was told he had a 5% chance of survival, but he defied the odds. She nursed him back to health, helping him learn to function again, even to hold a spoon. He would then insist on working on his laptop on the couch, despite being sick every half hour. The moment he could walk, he packed his bags and went to Russia. That fight is bigger than his fears. For Evgina, that has meant seven years sleeping with her phone, afraid I will get that call from him or from someone else because he can't talk anymore. Hmm. She gave up pursuing her husband not to go to Moscow long ago. Her only protest was to refuse to help pack his bags. But before his last visit, after the war started, Evgina accompanied him first to France. I wanted to make this trip beautiful, she remembers, forcing back tears as she recalls long strolls through the streets of Paris, talking endlessly. Deep inside, I knew what was coming. Gosh, this one will bring tears to your eyes, don't it? Ah, oh, excuse me. Nestov's place. Since Valdemar's arrest, Evgina has taken on his advocacy work, speaking out about the war in Ukraine and political repression in Russia, as well as her husband's case. On Monday, she will unveil, unveil the Boris Nemstov place in London, the result of a long campaign by Valdemar to honor his mentor and friend. The prominent opposition politician was shot beside the Kremlin in 2015 in a contract killing for which the contractor 
had never been caught. The renamed London Street, actually a roundabout, is close to the Russian trade delegation in Highgate. Highgate. And it shows pictures of them. The idea was that every car that comes to the big gate will see Boris Nemstov plaque. Ev Evgina explains, her husband hopes a different Russia will one day be proud of that name. For several years, a politician worked closely with Vladimir to lobby Western governments to sanction senior Russian officers, officials, excuse me, Russian officials for human rights violations. Their uh, success infuriated a political elite that had enjoyed traveling abroad and channeling funds there. In Moscow once, Voldemar told me he had concluded that those Maganisky, M-A-G-N-I-T-S-K-Y, Magnitsky sanctions are why both he and Mr. Nemstrov were targeted. Standing in for her husband is taking a heavy toll on Evgenia, but it has also kept her going. I am doing what I need to do so that he can be brought back to the kids and this hideous war stops and this murderous regime can be brought to justice. Lord Jesus be with that woman. Valdemar is not staying silent either. His long handwritten prison letter sent out to his convictions that Russia is not doomed to autocracy. And his people are not all brainwashed Putin devotees. He points to the large number of letters he gets from supporters who openly criticize the Ukraine invasion and the Kremlin, and to those who still protest publicity despite the risk. He urges the West not to isolate that part of Russian society that wants a different future for our country. He also warns that the Ukraine war will not stop while Valdemar Putin remains in power. For Putin, compromise is a sign of weakness and invitation to further aggression, he says. If he's allowed a face-saving exit from the war, then in a year or two we will have another one. Valdemar tells me he is coping with imprisonment with a mixture of exercise and prayer. Books and letters. As a historian, he has a particular interest in Soviet-era descendants and has been reading more about them as he awaits trial. Their favorite toast back then was, To the success of our hopeless cause. He writes, But as we know, it wasn't so helpless after all. Bless their hearts. What a story. I'll tell you what, I had to fight back the tears. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Unthinkable, isn't it? But some countries do. Unthinkable. I'll be back. Give someone a blessing. Because you are a blessing. I'll be back.